Good morning class. Today we are going to make up a very simple oil-based stain. Now if you remember me talking to you in class about stains versus dyes, dyes have transparency. Stains tend to be opaque, especially the darker the stain is, the more pigment, percentage of pigment they add to the carrier. In today's case, the carrier is going to be paint thinner. So that's what we're going to do today. So stand by. Before we get to making the stain, what we're going to do is we have a simple piece of alder that we used last week again. I've sanded this to 220. And what we're going to do is seal one half of the side with a solution of Elmer's glue. We have two parts of warm uh, distilled water and one part of the white glue. The glue is cooled down to room temperature. Again, we're going to start away from our edges and just work it out towards the edges. And we're going to do half of our sample. What I like about white glue is it dries absolutely clear, so it doesn't change the tone of the surface, but what it's going to help do is seal up the most porous part of the surface to where when we apply our stain color, it should take more evenly. Now, we applied our glue size to one half of it, and after it dried, I gave it a light sand with 220 grit sandpaper, which is what we sanded the wood to. So the next thing we're going to do is make up our simple oil-based stain, but I want to talk to you a little bit first about stains and pigments. This is from a company called the Ronin, R-O-N-A-N. Um, this is what they call Japan colors. Now, does that mean that it comes from Japan? No. What it means is it has a dryer in it, Japan dryer, which is uh, typically cobalt or manganese. Um, they add it to finely ground pigment, and it's into an oil medium, and that oil medium being linseed oil. Uh, this is the same thing if you went to an art supply store, you could buy these in two ounce tubes. They're called artist oils. Very fairly inexpensive, but the downside to them is they do have a shelf life to them because they have the addition of linseed oil. But once I open that lid and close it up again and start taking some of the pigment out, oxygen can get in and starts drying it out. That's one of the reasons I also like to use dry pigments like these. These are dry earth pigments, earth ores that you can mix into, in this case today. They're soluble into paint thinner uh, with the addition of acetone and the binder being our boiled linseed oil. So these have almost an indefinite shelf life. They're also soluble into different mediums. And what do I mean by mediums? It's soluble into water. It's soluble into alcohol. So many times when I'm trying to do touch-up work on a piece, I'll mix up a little bit of dry pigment into shellac and take an artist brush and very carefully uh, where there's minor scratches to the finish and or color and touch it up that way. Stains are comprised typically of three things. You have the pigment, which is what this would be. Then you have a carrier, and if it's an oil-based stain like the one we're going to make, our carrier would be actually paint thinner. But then, much like baking, where you need a binder to hold the flour together with the water, we're going to use boiled linseed oil as our binder to help keep those uh, pigment particles in solution, in suspension, rather. They don't actually dissolve like the dye colors we've used, where they dissolve into the water and they become one thing. The pigment particle, in this case, this particular one, is just suspended in the carrier. So we, to that, though, we're going to start out and add a little bit of acetone first and then we're going to add our linseed oil and then we're going to add our paint thinner. So let me get that set up. And we're gonna... Now we're actually ready to start making our stain. So what I've taken is two ounces of, this is a color called Bulletin Red from the Ronin Company. And we're going to take that and we're going to put that into some acetone first. You say, well, why am I going to put it into acetone if this is an oil-based stain that paint thinner is going to be the primary carrier? What I find is the acetone breaks down the pigment a little bit quicker. It doesn't dissolve it, but it just breaks it down easier, faster. To that, we're going to take some dry pigment. Now, these are simple pigments you can buy online through a website that I gave you from woodfinishingenterprises.com on a handout at the beginning of the semester. Color. So we're going to take a teaspoon of burnt umber. That's going to darken it up slightly. Then to this, we're going to add 
a little bit of lamp black and that's going to darken the color. I think to this we're going to go a quarter teaspoon. So a very red tone at this point, maybe too red. Since our color is a little redder than I wanted it to be, I did this actually on purpose. Now we're gonna take some green, also from the Ronin Company. This is chrome green, uh, chrome uh, green dark. So red and green makes brown. So this should kill that red to it. We have a little over an ounce of green pigment and we're gonna add this to it. Now you can see how we've taken it from very bright red to much more of a reddish brown because of that green. You could always add more green to it. You could add less depending on how it is you're trying to get the color to come out. So to this we're going to add our paint thinner, which is our primary carrier. And we're going to add about two ounces of this as well. And now we're going to add about an ounce, ounce and a half of our linseed oil, our binder. Just slowly drizzle that in, stir it up. And we're ready to strain this solution out and then brush it onto the surface. Remember, this is not a a dye color. This is pigment. Same kind of pigment they put into house paint. So the pigment particles are very large. They don't dissolve. They're just suspended in our carrier, which is a combination of acetone, paint thinner. To that we added our binder, which helps hold it in the solution. That's our linseed oil. Now we're going to strain it like we have other products in class. Dye colors. Now we have a solution that's ready to apply to the surface. When you're using stains, this is really important. I know I've talked about it even when we've used the dye colors. We don't want to leave the brush in the, in the pigment, into our stain. Why is that? Because remember, these stain particles are just suspended. They're not dissolved into it. This, the heavier part of it, the pigments are going to want to settle to the bottom of the container. So we don't want to pick up the pigment particles from the bottom. Right before I actually apply it, and I do this every time, I give it a quick stir. Now we're going to take this simple stain and brush it over the entire surface. And I'm going to do the face of it first. Then we'll do our end grain. Now we're going to wipe off all this excess. There's no sense to let it sit any longer. It's going to absorb into it at this point. I'm going to wipe the excess of that off. Now that we've actually applied our stain that we made, and remember this is a stain in this case, not a dye color, you can see the difference, I think, discernibly between the side that we sealed with the Elmer's glue here and the side that we didn't seal. You can see how much darker and blotchier looking it is. Personally, I still prefer dyes over this, but I will make the case that if I was trying to match something and I could tell that originally the piece was stained and not dyed, I'm going to have to use pigments in order to make a stain again to get it to match. So we've talked about making up our own stain, but what if you say, well, you know what, I'm more comfortable with you going to my local supplier, uh, maybe your local hardware store, your paint store, and using a ready-made stain like this. This is from a company called Minwax. Maybe many of you are familiar with this, have seen it before. They call on the label that this is a stain, and in part it is. It has a small percentage of pigment, much smaller than what I made. At the very bottom of the stick, you can see pigment right there. That's, you can pick it up from the very bottom, but the majority of it's very liquidy. Why is that? This is actually a combination of a pigment and an oil-based dye. They don't tell you that on the label. Uh, so unless you knew that, and I know it because I used to sell products like this, there's no way you would know that. So why is that information helpful? 
Dye colors, remember, even if it's an oil-based dye, and there are oil-based dyes available, have more clarity than do straight pigmented stains. And in this case, this color is dark oak. It's going to have a little bit more clarity than if I were to make this up out of pigments and make it myself. Now we've actually applied our stain, and it appears to be dry for all intents and purposes, but you really want to let this dry overnight before you try to clear coat it with whatever clear coat finish you're going to use, whether it be a waterborne, especially waterborne, uh, nitrocellulose lacquer, oil-based varnish. Let it dry overnight thoroughly so you don't have any adhesion problems. 